Hello, I'm Adam Dagna from the University of Maine, and today as part of the uh, Addressing Forest Climate Change in Maine webinar series, I'm going to give a short presentation uh, that provides an overview on U.S. net greenhouse gas emissions and how does Maine stack up compared to other states. So when it comes to greenhouse gas emissions uh, and forest carbon sequestration, um, the amount of emissions and sequestration can really vary depending on where and what you measure. So for example, we have three pie charts here representing emissions by uh, economic sector or source category across the globe, the US and just Maine. And what you can see here is that basically, um, depending on where you look, we have quite a dramatic sort of um, difference in uh, different sources of emissions. Uh, in addition, the pie charts are showing emissions. In addition, there's also, um, you can also look at sort of uh, emissions or sequestration that are just coming from uh, forest and, and land use. In the US, global agriculture and forestry produce about 24% of the total gross greenhouse gas emissions. In the US, agriculture produces about 10%, but US's forests year by year are growing faster than carbon is being removed. And therefore they're, they're sequestering um, uh, enough uh, carbon such that it's essentially removing 11% of greenhouse gases uh, uh, from, from the atmosphere uh, relative to U.S.'s total emissions. And in Maine, because we have such an abundance of forests that are also growing uh, at a much higher rate than um, harvest and carbon is being removed, that actually Maine's uh, forests roughly uh, remove 70% of annual greenhouse gas emissions. All right, so these numbers are all very different. And so that what I'm going to show here is that sort of, you know, how do how, how we sort of, um, how does Maine rank up relative to other parts in the U.S., but to also recognize that there can be quite a large variation across sort of um, emissions and sequestration that are aligned with sort of estimating uh, carbon budget of a given area. This figure here is basically showing Maine's greenhouse gas emissions and forest carbon uh, removals over time. The green line is showing Maine's gross greenhouse gas emissions, which are largely coming from um, uh, transportation, uh, electricity generation, and heating. All right. The red line is basically, which is below the x-axis, is showing the level of uh, carbon that's being removed from Maine forests. And the farther it gets below the x-axis, the higher the proportion, uh, uh, basically, the, the, the higher the amount of sequestration that's occurring uh, year on year. And that's represented as a negative because it's essentially being removed from the atmosphere. All right, if we take the green line, add it to the red line, then we get the blue line, which is the net greenhouse gas emissions, which is essentially gross greenhouse gases plus the removals that are coming um, uh, through Maine's forests. And collectively, that indicates that uh, about 70% of Maine's gross greenhouse gas emissions are currently being removed by the additional year-on-year -year sequestration uh, by Maine's forests, all right? And that's steadily been increasing over time since 1990, where it's sort of been peaking out at around 70% for the past decade. So the question is, when you look at that number and say, wow, Maine can offset, uh, you know, basically is, it's offsetting or removing 70% of uh, uh, forest carbon, how um, of uh, Maine's forest carbon is re removing 70% of uh, the state's gross greenhouse gas emissions, how does that compare to other states? So to do that, we did a quick exercise to look at basically how greenhouse gas emissions from fossil-based emi uh, fossil sources, all right, for all 50 states uh, that's collected by the EPA, compares to the forest carbon sequestration, which is measured at the uh, sequestration in the growing stock, so it does not uh, account for the harvested wood products, which is, still, uh, which is a relatively small proportion. And that information is collected sort of consistently across all the states by the U.S. Forest Service. All right, and so to look at that again, remember uh, our net greenhouse gases is just fossil greenhouse gases plus this forest carbon sequestration, right, or emissions if you're basically, if your removals are higher than growth. And we can look at that percent of forest removal but that by just doing um, carbon sequestration divided by the fossil greenhouse gas emissions. All right, and so this calculation, we're also, because these are available year on year, I'm going to take the annual estimates that are averaged over 2008 to 2018, which will minimize some of the potential outlier bias that might come from um, uh, estimating uh, these impacts uh, for uh, at a, just one specific point in time. So the first one is just to look at how this is the fossil-based emissions by state. So the darker the states, the higher the emissions. And so this is not by per capita or anything. This is just pure emissions that are counted within the boundary of each state. 
All right, and so as you can see, Texas is the highest, which is uh, which is probably uh, you know probably uh, reasonable or uh, come to be expected. Maine is ranked at, as 46th in terms of the uh, total absolute gross uh, greenhouse gas emissions from uh, fossil fuels. Vermont is basically the least emitting state uh, in the U.S. When it comes to forest carbon sequestration, Maine ranks about 20th. So here, um, basically, it means so the lower the number, the more the sequestration is happening um, on the landscape year on year. And so Maine, with its about 12 million metric tons of carbon dioxide equivalent per year, ranks 20th. All right. Mississippi actually ranks first, um, sequestering close to over uh, 50 million metric tons per year. Uh, and Colorado actually ranks last. And so that's that's a combination uh, basically because it, um, I think, potentially has had more removals over the last 10 years than sequestration, uh, not just through harvesting, but also potential loss through um, uh, infestations, pests, and wildfire uh, as well. So if you take basically the, the gray map, and the yellow map, put those together, we get net greenhouse gases by state. And so here what you want, what you're looking at is basically Texas has the highest source of net greenhouse gas emissions. All right. Uh, Oregon has the has the least. All right. So that's basically because it's sequestration is actually higher than their gross greenhouse gas emissions. All right. Um, and, and Maine ranks uh, as, I believe, uh, 48th from this perspective. So there's just uh, Oregon and I think, I think potentially Vermont are the two states that are higher than in terms of um, having lower net greenhouse gas emissions. So from this perspective, Maine ranks quite high, uh, as to be expected because of the abundance of forests that we have relative to the population. The other way that we can think about this is we can look at the percent removals, uh, percent of greenhouse gases removed uh, by state. So this is a way to try to sort of get at um, the relative effect of sequestration and removals. All right, and sort of kind of get it in a bit more even, even um, perspective across this, across the US. Uh, and one you can see here basically is that Maine is ranked um, uh, fourth. Uh, in this perspective, in terms of percent removals, I think Mississippi moved above uh, Maine um, in terms of when you compare net versus just percent removals. All right, and Oregon's ranked the highest. Montana's actually ranked 50th, so that one should say 50 when it comes in terms of percent removals. So again, Maine ranks quite high. Some other things to think about of why, you know, some question might question why is Maine not number one? Well, one, Oregon has quite a lot of uh, natural and public publicly owned forests that is maybe managed slightly differently that might uh, enhance sequestration from that perspective. And then down in Mississippi, there's a lot of pine plantations uh, and those pine plantations are probably somewhere along the lines in their terms of um, you know, their growing cycle um, that are essentially at, at um, where the last 10 years they've been really reaching sort of uh, max sequestration potential. So last, just to sort of conclude, this is that map that I just showed, but now sort of allocated over um, on a state by state basis to understand sort of where the relative uh, 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 rank, states rank, but also with respect to their sort of percent of total uh, percent of forest carbon that's removing the annual fossil greenhouse gas emissions. So here's where I showed that Oregon basically is actually, uh, because it's a, somewhere along the line of 102, 103%, it's actually reducing more. Um, its forests are re removing more emissions than are pre being produced by fossil fuels, followed by Vermont, Mississippi, Maine, and then Virginia are the top five. On the right-hand side, these are the states where there's actually uh, basically um, carbon removals um, are essentially uh, greater than the amount of growth. So that means in terms of carbon being uh, harvested and removed from the stand. Uh, and so that's why you have net carbon emissions uh, from forests and that's uh, getting you a negative number. And so the top five states there are Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, and New Mexico, followed by Arizona and Utah. So again, this makes sense. You know, this is the sort of Rocky Mountain region that doesn't have an abundance of forest and the forest that is there is not necessarily um, fast growing um, as well. But anyway, overall, it looks like Maine is ranking pretty high. The question is, what else can we do to try to get Maine up into that number one spot? Thank you.